and Mandi. So I will tell you a bit about my company, Materialistics. Materialistics, it's a small scale industry which is owned by four of us, four partners. We are four partners in this. And we deal with the production of essential oils. So we deal with uh, natural products basically. Um, our aim, our company's aim is to produce environment pro uh, friendly products which can be easily recycled, which doesn't cause any harm to the flora and fauna. So um, recently we have been working on one of our projects that is extraction of oil from coriander. So uh, basically we compared the three different methods, the traditional methods of extraction. So uh, the main objective of, of our company was to compare the traditional methods that is already I said, uh, succulent extraction, uh, extractor press and we compared hydro distillation. So these were the three methods that we used entirely. And uh, another thing we did after, after extracting the products, quantitative and qualitative analysis of uh, extracted essential oil that was determined using FTIR and HPLC. These were the two methods that we used for the analysis process. And if I talk about the work of interest, linalool. So what is linalool? It is a natural like, occurring terpene that can be found in plants and flowers. So why, why linalool? Why it was chosen? Because there is a reason. It is a dominant compound found in uh, coriander. Almost 75% is of linalool in the coriander. That is why we have opted for the linalool. It is the oldest and the best known sedative. Uh, it has floral aroma and promotes relaxation also. It can be used in households, for example, in kitchen and many other things also, and even in the houses. It is a powerful terpene due to its effect in serotonin receptor. So just because of this, it helps in the it helps in the treatment of anxiety and depression. As these days, most of the people are suffering from anxiety, depression. So yeah, this is the best thing to go for it. And it also helps to combat somin insomnia. The people who are not able to sleep, it's good for them also. Also, it has medicinal properties that could be uh, helpful in preventing different types of cancer. Now, I would like to call Rajita uh, to continue. So this is what the project timeline looks like. We started with soft grid extraction and its rotary evaporation in first uh, few weeks. Followed by we did ample uh, trials of extractor press where a um, few of them uh, were trouble maker. But uh, eventually we found extract. Followed by that we went with hydro distillation after our reading week. Uh, basically th thinking that we are actually ahead of the track, we decided to include another method which is hydro distillation. In week 11 and 13, we went with analysis where we used HPLC and FTIR and compared our analysis. Um, in last week, we just worked on our final documentation and presentation. The next one is workflow which will be carried by Mandi. workflow and strategy of our project basically what exactly we did to complete our project or to reach to our goal so basically we did three extraction methods first one is soft slate extraction second one is extractor press and the last one is hydro distillation so first of all we did soft slate extraction so for the soft slate extraction what is soft slate extraction? So soft slate extraction is a traditional method to extract, extract some bioactive compounds from some natural resources. So for the soft slate extraction, we performed three trials. So for the first and second trial, we used 15 gram of coriander powder with 250 ml of ethanol. And for the third trial, we used 15 gram of coriander powder with the 250 ml of dihyl ether. So Basically, we used two different solvents. The reason is that we just want to see any yield difference, what real difference we got by using two different solvents. So after the soft slate extraction, we performed extractor press. So this is the extractor press machine, which we used to extract the coriander oil. So the extractor press is a manual method, which is used to extract something by the uh, action of heat. So same as the soft slate extraction,
instruction in the extractor press we use two different solvents ethanol and the dithyl ether but the method is different to use them these two solvents for the first and second trial we made a slurry of 15 gram of coriander powder with 20 ml of ethanol for the third one we made slurry of 15 gram of coriander powder with 20 ml of dithyl ether why we use the our uh, coriander powder and the solvent in the form of slurry because first we try to put simply the coriander powder in the hopper and try to get the oil but we were unable to get any oil so that's why then we took a decision to make a slurry so after the extractor press we did hydro distillation hydro distillation is another traditional method to extract bioactive compounds but in this method we boil the plant material in the water this is the setup for hydro distillation we boil our plant material with water in this round bottom flask and collect our uh, the final product here so for the hydro distillation we performed four trials but the we discard the first one uh, because it was totally unsuccessful so because we tried to uh, boil the coriander powder directly with the water but then same as the extractor press we made our sample in the form of a slurry but in this one we used 15 gram of coriander powder in 250 ml of ethanol but here also we made a difference like for the first and second trial we made slurry and performed the hydro distillation instantly but for the third one we kept our slurry for the overnight the reason is that for the first and second trial we didn't get any good yield of oil and we we were not able to obs uh, observe any oil droplets in the aqueous phase so that's why we kept our slurry for the overnight to see any differences in the yield so all these our workflow which we performed but after the hydro distillation we tried to separate our oil from the aqueous phase so first we tried with the ethanol but as we see there is no any separate layer we got because ethanol is miscible with the uh, water due to the presence of uh, hydroxyl group so then we decided to use DCM as a solvent to separate the oil so here we see like a separate layer in all these three samples then we collect this separate layer and perform the gravity filtration and after gravity filtration we put our extract in the water bath to evaporate any uh, excess solvent and collect our final extract so after hydro distillation also we face some challenges in our project so now i would like to inv uh, invite janvi to carry on from the next slide thank you to all of you looking forward for the new challenges which we have faced during our project and how we have resolved them so let's begin with the toxin extraction which was our first method where we have performed the three trials and this where we completely uh, performed well with 100% sample collection on the talking about the rotary evaporation which we have performed where in by doing the first trial we have found we have faced a problem where we were not able to rotate the evaporatory uh, flask out of it and due to that reason which we were performing under the negligible vacuum pressure we were unable to rotate it and due to that reason we have performed the troubleshooting and the reset of whole rota web was being performed by doing the first trial of toxlet extraction the third one is the extractor press so we have performed three trials with the extract uh, with the extractor press uh, of the coriander powder but while doing it we have found this smoke coming out of the extractor press machine and there were burnt flakes, flakes which were being uh, extracted out of that and due to that reason, uh, reason we have resolved it with the slurry which was being made by the solvent which we have used in the toxlet extraction where 20 ml of ethanol was added with the coriander powder and we have extracted the three trials of the essential oil and for the third trial we have used the uh, dihydrate are the burn flakes which we have been collected and there was smoke found out of the extractor press machine and for the second picture is about the extractor oil which uh, where the first and second one with the solvent as a ethanol was being collected and as the third one if you can see that there was no uh, oil was being extracted out of dihydrate ether used in the solvent so 
So the second challenge which we have faced was by doing the HPLC analysis. So the first three uh, analysis with the SOXNET extract extraction samples were performed correctly, but while doing the extracted press, where uh, we we can see that there was no uh, calibration curve was been found and it was been missing, which we, where we cannot find any concentration out of it and no retention time. So for resolving this problem, which we have where we have done the manual integration and the peak shifting. And you can see here that there is a peak out of the extractor press analysis and you can find the calibration curve as well. The third issue was being faced with our third extraction method, which is hydro distillation, where uh, our sample uh, was converted into the solid residue and which we, where we cannot be able to cut, uh, analyze with the HPLC method. And so we have resolved it with the FTIR method and we have performed the hydro distillation with the FTIR method. While coming forward to the analysis with the HPLC high performance liquid chromatography for the SOXNET extraction, here we can, uh, there are three SOX, uh, trials, three samples, and we can see that the retention time of the three are very nearby to each other and the concentrations also, so that we can say that the SOXNET extraction goes well with the HPLC analysis. For the extractor press, uh, we have done first two trials with it, where the second concentration which we have uh, found the calibration curve, in that we have seen that the concentration is in the negative value, which is minus 24.192 EPM, and uh, for the hydro distillation, we have found the negative value in the concentration, which is minus 94.682. And for the third, fourth, and fifth trials of the hydro distillation, we cannot observe any any data out of the hydro distillation. Uh, and why our uh, values are being in the negative form? What is the reason? We'll be explained in the next slide. So this is the calibration curve that we uh, basically got from our standards. We got our standards from 50, 100, 200, 500, and 1000 ppm. But as you can see here, for hydro distillation and extractor press, that it is really very low. So basically, we can say that the limit of quantification as an LOQ of our methods <coughs> were basically less than that of LOD of our HPLC. That is the biggest reason we got our concentration in negative form. similar to that, but if we move to extractor press and hydro distillation one, you will see that they are nowhere near to, they are nowhere near to the standard spectrum, but this one is the combined spectrum, so here it is clearly observable that the soxlet is the so far basically uh, similar to that of our standard curve. Moving on to one way ANOVA, which will be explained by Jamil. So by deciding with the three extractor extraction method, we have performed the one way ANOVA with the integral plot of the yield percentage versus the method which we have used. So here are the three methods we have mentioned. First one, high extractor, hydro distillation, and the soxlet. And it was being compared with the yield percentage. And here we can see that the soxlet goes with a near to 34 to 35 percentage of yield percentage where the hydro distillation source at very least and it's here in the middle it shows the extractor press uh, purity which is the yield percentage and we can uh, conclude that that uh, soxlet goes the best in the finding the percentage yield out of it. So uh, concluding what our project really was, uh, hydro distillation was actually very very low uh, the content of line alone, the percent yield, everything was very low. One such reason is that, that the line alone boiling point is 198 degrees Celsius. And hydro distillation, uh, the maximum temperature we can go is 100 degrees Celsius, which is boiling point of our water. And uh, that is the major reason 
as the the raffinade that had all the liner rule which we already discarded and did not get anything in our distillate moving on with extractor press 15.81% uh, we got uh, from our extract so uh, while the percentage is low uh, is based this is basically with only ethanol we did not get anything from diethyl ether the major reason for diethyl ether was that, that it is very very volatile so as soon as it was poured into the extractor machine it was just evaporated so what we got was just the flakes burnt flakes are uh, moving to solid uh, extraction it, we got more than 30% which is pretty much better than the other ones uh, so solid extraction as you can see here also the extract we got was the uh, high, in highest amount than the other methods um moving on next step okay so uh different solvents can be explored within the same polarity range as that of ethanol since it gave the best results with solvent and uh, extractor press we can also uh, go for gcms for the analysis rather than going for the hplc the major reason is that linalool itself is a volatile com component and gcs are best suitable analytical method to analyze oils so um sorry for liner rule uh, so as uh, while preparing our standard calibration curve it was found out that liner rule is really not stable at room temperature it will like as i already mentioned that it is volatile so it was evaporating so fast that um, we can uh, basically go for cold temperatures to maintain it the last one is different extraction methods can be explored so in our uh, project we only uh, performed with traditional methods uh where we can go with these extraction methods that is uh, supercritical fluid extraction subcritical water extraction as they are eco friendly uh green so it is basically good to rather than going with organic solvent as in traditional method there are chances of uh,